Hey folks, Greg here. Welcome to episode four of Modular Curiosity. Uh, today we're going to talk about gates and triggers. So uh, let's get rid of this patch for right now. Gosh, this was fun to make earlier today, but let's make a brand new patch by clicking this and going new. Bye bye. All right. We know how to build our normal set setup, right? We're going to go here, direct sound, speakers. I like the mental mixer. Pop it right there. Left channel, right channel. We check with the VCO. Do we have sound? Yes, we do. Awesome. Okay, we're all set. Now, gates versus triggers. Okay, gates are control voltages that turn on and off. And I'm going to grab a couple different things here. Let's find the clock. There's a particular clock I really like called Simple Clock. There it is, JW. I like that one. And, of course, we want, what was our new best friend in Episode 2? It was the scope. There we go. Okay, so a clock is basically just a pulse. And let's see if I can freeze it here. And what we really need is something to hear the clock. So let's do, take a bass drum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this clock to trigger a bass drum. There we go. Now, if we look at this scope, we see these very sharp vertical lines. And that's typical of a clock. All it is is a pulse that turns on and off almost immediately, as opposed to a gate. Now, on a gate, you can see it turns on, it stays on for a while, and then turns off. So a gate is literally the concept of a gate. If something's open, things happen. When it closes, things stop. Okay, so what are we going to use these two things, gates and triggers, for? Well, your new best friend today is going to be the ADSR. And that's going to be under Fundamentals. And we're going to use that to drive a voltage-controlled amplifier. So we remember what that does, right? Uh, VCA is basically a volume control that we can turn up and down using control voltage. And ADSR is something that creates control voltages in really interesting ways. So if you feed it a gate, let's see, let's feed it this gate, come out to there. Okay, what's going to happen here, and let me plug this into the scope so we can see it, is ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. And what I should do is put the gate here so we can see it going as well. Okay, when the gate starts here, the attack is how fast... How fast do we want that attack to happen? If we slow it down, we can see up here that the attack, the the rate that the volume, see, see how we have a little curve here? Now, if I turn it too far, it doesn't get high enough before the gate turns off, so I'm losing a lot of volume. So we got to kind of play with it, find out where's, oh, that seems to be about the longest delay we can get. Let's make it a little faster. Now, sustain, I'm going to show these to you in a little bit different order. See this level here? That's the sustain level. See this drop? The rate of drop is the D. Attack, decay, sustain, release. So, see we have a very quick decay right here. If I slow down the decay, And 
I'll tell you what, I'm going to slow down the LFO. So now if I'm a little faster, decay. You can see right there how that's the the slope of that line to the right of the peak. Now this flat one here, that's sustain. If I turn that down, we're going to see that's where it's going to sustain. So I want it a little louder. So what do you think release is? Well, release is what happens after the gate stops. So if I turn up the release, there, see, even though the gate has turned off, we're turning the volume down slowly. There we go. So by using our ADSR, I can really mold you know, the, the shape of the sound. Now, of course, since this is a control voltage, we could also put it on a filter. Actually, that's not right. What I want is this to go there, that to go there, and this to go to my cutoff frequency. There we go. Now we can see that we're controlling not only the volume, but also the cutoff of the, of the filter. Now here's the thing. Gates are really, let me turn this off for a second. Gates are really useful if you have a keyboard. Because basically on a keyboard, when you press the key down, your gate goes high like this. It goes up to 5 volts. And it stays at 5 volts until you let go of the key, in which case it immediately drops. So we probably don't want every keyboard note to sound like There we go. See, that would be exactly the same attack to case sustain release as the gate itself. We want to give it you know a, a little feeling, a little something a little different. So let's there we go. Soften the attack a little bit. There we go. Maybe. See, so just by adjusting that, we can change the, the timbre of the tone entirely. So, ADSRs are really good for keyboards. Turns out they are not that good for triggers. Let's see why. Okay, well, we can see it flashing. What's going on? Well, what's happening is because this trigger is so fast, we don't have time for the attack of the ADSR to rise before it turns off. So if we turn it way, way down, and the only reason we're hearing anything is because of the release. If we had the release down, Wouldn't be much there. In this case, decay and sustain don't really do much until they're all the way at the end. That has almost no effect at all. Now, what if we want to use a clock to, say, drive uh, a drum system, and uh, we also want to have notes kick off in sync 
with the drum system. We want to, something to go wow every time this clock hits. So let's, let's turn that drum on again. Well, I can't slow down the attack. It doesn't give me the wow sound. It doesn't do that because of what we were talking about, that the release here on the trigger happens so fast that the ADSR doesn't get a chance to attack. So if we want to have basically what's called a function that the ADSR, an envelope, as it's called, an envelope generator is, is what an ADSR is called. An envelope is this shape of control voltages that you send it a gate or a trigger and it creates what's also called a function to create this shape. Now we can't have a slow rise with a pulse, with a trigger, because the trigger's done. So what we need is a completely different module. And this module is so cool that I'm gonna have an entire, let's see, I'm gonna have an entire video just on this video, or just on this, um, this module. Okay, what this is, the Bifaco Rampage. And when it hits, a trigger comes in, you'll see, how fast do I want it to rise? How fast do I want it to fall? There we go. And why don't we put that, you know what, instead of a, um, instead of a VCA, let's use that dual attenuator. Actually, we'll use them together. See what I'm doing? I'm trying to turn the volume up. It's not working too well. So what we have here is the rise is basically, let me put the ADSR back up here. The rise is basically the attack knob here, and the fall is the release knob here. And we basically don't have these middle two, but it works off a trigger instead of a gate. So, See, I can just actually click the trigger. Now there's all kinds of things that the Rampage can do, and we'll go into that. For instance, you can make this narrower. You can make it wider. We can make it There we go. We can make it cycle. And since we have two of them, there's some really interesting things we can do by having the function on one side control something of the function on the other side. But we're going to get into that later on. Okay, this is a quick episode. Clocks versus gates. Remember, gates are literally a gate. It opens, something happens, it closes, something shuts off, and a gate can remain open for an amount of time. A trigger, that's a pulse. That's something that just happens immediately like like this right here so your assignment for this episode is to make a wow noise make something like that happen using a trigger and then using a gate and see how is it different how easy is it to make a wow 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 sound using one and then using the other that's your assignment. All right, folks, thanks for listening. And again, if you enjoy these uh, episodes, please like and subscribe because that really helps me out. And I'll see you next time. Stay curious.